back that I had just used. So <laughs> the the results can vary. <laughs> you're signing autographs, and then uh, you're, afterwards you're just watching the juniors and seniors playing. You're already out of the tournament. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. It's definitely. I mean, but that I think that speaks a lot towards like not only the quality of the players, but the game itself, right? Like it's so easy to get involved and be a part of this community and get a tournament ready deck and just start competing. Yeah, that's uh, for sure, and especially with the, the products that we've seen coming out of uh, TCPI, it's been so easy to just go to your local store and grab one of these, like the, the Ice Rider Calyrex deck, the, the Mewtwo VMAX deck that you can just get off the store for like 20 bucks or whatever it is, and you're ready to go. You can play in a tournament like this and at least try to keep up. It's, it, it's, it's pretty viable. Yeah, absolutely, and then we also have an Arceus V-Star Ultra Premium Collection coming out soon. We had the Origin form Palkia uh, box that includes one Palkia V and one Palkia V star already. So if you're looking to play Palkia, or you're looking to play Kirin, those are great products to be able to have. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe not playing Palkia after this event. We've we've, we've noticed Indeed. that's been a disaster. We had one on stream and did not go very well. But yeah, that's uh, I mean there are there are so many great cards that you can uh, that you can add to your decks and uh, take to these events. But it looks like we are ready to get underway here in round number 14. Two great names. Let's go ahead and take it to the table. All right. On one side of the table, we have John Eng from North America. And then on the other side of the table, we have Agustin Campo from Argentina. So more Latin America representation right here at the Latin America International Championships. Yeah, it's exactly what we love to see. Uh, traveling from Argentina to come over to this event and has 31 match points right now. Very strong, looking to get a win and potentially an ID in the following round. Could lock up a spot in the top eight. John Ang on the other side with 30 match points, so possibly going to be looking for the two uh, victories in the next two rounds. And uh, John is a player that we've seen so often on the stream in the, the regional events, uh, continually finding uh, these very strong starts, but hasn't been able to close out and has an opportunity here to potentially win a few matches and make it to the top eight. Yeah, John definitely a very consistent player. I've played him quite a bit throughout the years, and I had one season where I believe he had a stop recently, and then there were other uh, very high quality seniors that had aged up and I just couldn't beat them for the life of me. There was no way. I, I kept joking that the, the new school was beating the old school all the time. <laughs> I couldn't get a win against John. I couldn't get a win against other players um, that had aged up. So uh, yeah, these senior players there, I think they really absorb the game and it's a very exciting time to play as compared to when you and I were seniors. So it's definitely like the game is, has grown so much since then. And it's definitely like they make lifelong friendships and whatnot. So very cool to see them also be successful as a master. Yeah, even uh, Regan Retzloff, who's still uh, doing very well in this tournament. This is a uh, first year in masters. And obviously we saw uh, the performance that he was able to have in the senior division. A little bit more about Augustine. Uh, has a 38th place finish uh, at the International in Sao Paulo in 2018. So uh, looking to do a little better now this time. I think that's almost guaranteed with 31 match points. And uh, also a fourth place finish at the special event in Argentina in 2019. Now today's this match will be a Lugia mirror match. We were just taking a look at some upside down prizes because of the uh, placement of them. We're getting that fixed right now. But I didn't notice anything like super impactful getting prize from either player. So hopefully we'll get to see a very clean um, Lugia mirror match right here. Absolutely. Both these players are probably accustomed to playing this matchup. Interested to see what the uh, the tech slots, those extra cards, the, the 55 base cards, as you've been saying, but those five extra cards usually, that's really where you make the difference. And are they going to be beneficial in the mirror match? We will find out. Now we're about to see the game begin here. Agustin Campo versus John Eng for round 14. Everything to play ho to play for here for both players. We're going to see Agustin start off with a Luminion. Even though he cannot play the supporter, he's trying to just get that into your hand. And I feel like that indicates that your hand might not be as strong and it's inviting a Marnie. But then if your hand wasn't strong, 
that, that strong anyways, then the Marnie might actually end up helping you out. And it lets you get more information in the deck regarding price cards, how many Lugias do you have access to, how many Arcubes. But we might see a whiff here on the turn one Lugia, I'm not so sure. Yeah, the uh, the Luminion is a, a great way to just look through the deck also, but uh, in, it's a great attacker as well, as we've seen in this mirror match so often. When you see a single prize Pokemon, especially like that Radiant Charizard, uh, you could knock that out with the Aqua Return at some point, and we do see the energy dedicated to the Luminion. Yeah, however, choosing not to grab a supporter, so the initial plan was to commit as many resources as possible, really going out of his way, to find that basic Lugia, but he is unfortunately unable to find it. So oh. the advantage, once again, that we've talked about so much of having the turn one Lugia down is now gone, and John Eng will be able to take advantage of that whiff. Yeah, that is brutal. That is basically the one reason that you want to go first is to get that Lugia V-Star out first. It's impossible if you don't have the Lugia to go with it. I'm not expecting to see Thornton today. And there is the Luminion V. Going to go ahead and look for a supporter now. And uh, haven't exactly seen what's in John's hand, but you have to be thinking that anything to get closer to a Lugia would be optimal. Now, some important differences from both players' deck lists. They are both playing um, different techs. John is opting to play three Lugia V instead of four. And he is running the Radiant Charizard, the Evil Doll, and the Raikou, the one Pokemon that's missing would be the Dunsparce and I guess perhaps the Stoutland though we haven't seen too much of that one so far so no Dunsparce to protect its weakness however Agustin on the other side is not playing the Raikou so this is similar to the matchups that we've seen before where the different techs will potentially end up helping or not because Agustin does have the Dunsparce himself so John being rewarded by not having that Dunsparce opening up that space and Agustin having the protection for John's Raikou. Yep, Augustine is missing the Manaphy in this list, so perhaps the uh, the bench damage that could come down from the Raikou may be relevant at some point. Of course, we still have yet to see a, a Dunsparce or even a Lugia at this point for Augustine, so I guess I won't get too far ahead of myself. John, on the other hand, desperately looking for one of those three Lugias or a way to search it out. Looks like we do see at least a quick ball. Yeah. So that should be very helpful. And even tossing the Archeops. Yeah, getting the Archeops feels really good here. Getting that Lugia when your opponent was not able to do so. And they had one of the coin flips. Certainly feels good. What's not going to feel great for John, though, is if he's forced to take down the Pumpkaboo with Radiant Charizard. <laughs> That's a big energy commitment for very little reward. Yeah, I, I would expect to see some gusting effect at some point, but... Uh, honestly, with both players' hands so far, I'm, I'm not expecting very much. It's uh, it's been it's been tough to get the opening set up. At least the Archeops is in the discard pile for John, and the Lugia is down. But Augustine has yet to play a card into the discard pile. Now we are also seeing the Collapse Stadium in play as well. Make sure to keep track of that. Make sure I don't miss it again. Uh, the pressure is off John though to get two Lugias down because it's not really threatened. Augustine cannot really attack other than with Pumpkaboo's attack really next turn. And that's not going to be enough to deal with a Lugia. So John sitting in a very comfortable spot here if he has the potential to set up the Lugia, set up the Archeops, and ghost a two-prizer, ideally Agustin's single Lugia. That would basically put him in a very big advantage. Yeah, the pressure is certainly on Augustine at this point. Uh, just needed one Lugia last turn. Now multiplied here as it is, will be looking for at least two. And this is not very strong. The Serena triple discard. At least the Archeops are in there. But only for two cards. Yeah, we've been praising Serena Ultra Ball. all weekend. Yeah, there's the Ultra Ball. So he will be able to find that Lugia now. Only one, however... So if John can capitalize on that, that will be very good for him. And as I was saying, we've praised Serena so much over the weekend. The, the fact that it gives you option always plays towards benefiting skillful plays. However, it's not a perfect card. If you have a lot of cards in your hand and you're trying to set up, then even when you discard three, right, you only draw two. So that can be a small drawback. And it's certainly not better than research in that situation. But better than Marnie because you really need to get those Archipses into a discard pile. 
Yeah, I mean, if you think about the, the way that this hand unfolded, if the Ultra Ball was in hand, it's, it's completely different. You're able to toss the Archeops, get the hand low enough, and then you can use the Serena for p potentially full effect, and not, maybe you're not only looking for one Lugia, you might find the second instead. Uh, going to lose a ton of resources here. Ultra Ball, after getting the hand up to five, now back down uh, to just two, and it's Lugia Pass. It's Lugia Pass, and Agustin did get rid of that Marnie as well, so I'm wondering if he has a follow-up supporter to what he just did. And if John chose not to take a prize card for some reason here, then the Collapse Stadium could also be another problem for Agustin, because he would only be able to access one of those Archipses. So we've seen players before today, and yesterday not take prizes on purpose, delay their summoning star a little bit to take advantage of the Collapse Stadium and clogged up benches. And this could be the case to try and get a better attacker set up than, or a more cost-efficient attacker than Radiant Charizard here. Well, I believe it's just the one Archeops in the discard pile right now. And maybe if Radiant Charizard had a two retreat cost, this would be a different story as we do see that there was a Serena in hand for John, and we obviously know that the reach for the Lugia V-Star is available, but maybe the energies to attack with the Lugia this turn aren't there, and that would mean that you have to commit all of these energies to the Radiant Charizard, which feels a little awkward, but at least it handles a Lugia. Yeah, committing five energies to Charizard is not ideal, but yeah, that's what we are going to see, John recognizing that the advantage that he gains from starting the price trade-off will hopefully make up for the slower start that he's been getting, or if he has enough, as I said, to target down the Lugia, if he has a costing effect in his hand, then it will certainly be worth it, because that will be another delayed turn for Agustin, with the small drawback that John will not be able to attack with Charizard the following turn, and I believe I do see the boss's orders in his hand right now. Yeah, there was, uh, there was at least the Serena somewhere in there, so certainly should have an option. But yeah, the boss's orders as well. Now we'll just see uh, how you want to order this. It makes perfect sense to use the boss's orders first. Then if your hand is weak and you don't want to bring up one of these V Pokemon later, you can just draw some cards with that Serena. As we've talked about the versatility, there's going to be a huge knockout with that Combustion Blast dealing 230 damage as we see the double turbo and two prize cards for John. Definitely much better use of the Charizard than taking down this Pumpkaboo and very smartly choosing to use the Buzz Disorders, as you mentioned, to make sure that you have the follow-up draw. Oh and no. Agustin having a very underwhelming turn of attach pass. No Lugia, no draw supporter that was discarded off of this arena trying to get the Lugia. So falling really far behind. And this is a spot where you would definitely consider um, giving up, honestly. Like, no Lugia in play nothing to really threaten. Maybe the Luminion can take down the Charizard, but then all of your energies are reset. And yeah, John might get, get away with only one Arceus because of Agustin's very underwhelming setup right here. Yeah, we're only looking for an energy for the turn and that Gust effect. We certainly do see that. Multiple choices there. Going to go with the V-Guard energy, and there is the Serena. Just a retreat. Going to be able to handle this Luminion. That's too much for Augustine. He's going to tap out here in game number one. Very good concession there by Agustin, giving himself 20 minutes basically per game to close out game two and potentially game three. He knows he will have the advantage once again of going first. He just needs a much better hand to be able to take advantage of that. And he is playing four copies of Lugia, so starting with it, definitely possible. He's also playing the four Quick Fall and four Ultra Ball, which I feel at this point every single Lugia is playing and it has become the standard. Yeah, this is uh, definitely a spot where you start to look at the, the statistics of it, and you did not find your Lugia last game, and uh, you had a very poor opener. Now you get an opportunity to go first, and uh, you're likely to at least have two decent setups after this. You've had your one brick, now let's move on, and maybe John will find his brick. Hopefully he finds it in game three, however, because you want to make it uh, some use of uh, being able to take advantage of him going first. And you'd like that to not be as uh, overwhelming as it typically can be. Exactly. As discouraging it is to uh, lose a game, of course, you're playing a mirror match. You're both playing very similar lists. So the fact that you went first and you lost means that can happen to your opponent as well. So you're hoping here to get a solid win on game two, and then maybe the reverse happens for you in game three, and it's your opponent who doesn't draw as hot.
we know John's list did cut some corners, three Archeops, three Lukia, and the two capture energy. So there, there is certainly potential for the, the hand not to be as strong, but that is uh, still left to be seen. Now John trying to decide here whether he wants to start the Lugia or the Raikou. He does commit to the Raikou, but I fully understand the conundrum there. If you start Lugia, then you risk your opponent taking two prizes immediately. If you risk the Raikou, then you no longer have that resource. And so far, John Eng is not playing Dunsparce, and he didn't see Agustin play down at Dunsparce. So he might think that he's, it's not something he has to worry about, which gives more value to the Raikou. However, seeing the two choice builds price for John, yeah. that means there's less utility for the Raikou overall. So I'm guessing he's going to be happy with his decision if he realizes that two choice builds are priced. Yep, we'll see if John is able to get that information and the Luminion V for Augustine. That has to be brutal. I, I believe, yeah, that is the only copy, and we know that it could be such a strong attacker. We've even seen some players uh, starting to use two in their list uh, for going the Crobat V in some situations. Exactly. We've seen that Luminion really put in work. You'd think, like, obviously its main purpose is to fetch a supporter card, but we've seen it attack more times than I honestly would have imagined throughout the course of the weekend. So I'm sure um, that could come into play if Agustin at some point needs uh, an attacker that can take down Charizard and not leave um, a liability in play, or if he simply needs a boss to follow up on some pressure on John, given that he will be starting off with the Lugia, and I'm pretty sure his hand was good enough to where he'll be able to uh, continue to apply pressure and have a normal setup that he wants. Well, what's better than one Lugia? Let's go with another. The Quick Ball was able to uh, toss away that Archeops, which is a fantastic open. We do see the double turbo energy too, which maybe means that uh, there will be an opportunity to uh, start to attack on the second turn and uh, maybe only do this with one Archeops. Uh, we've seen that work for John in, uh, in last game, but hopefully uh, for Augustine's sake, there's a little more to be done on the second turn. Yeah, definitely. And as we've said before, one Archeops it, one Archeops is um, okay, two Archeops is fantastic, but if one Archeops will get you through and will let you get that advantage, apply that pressure, then it is always, always worth it. So now the pressure is on John to be able to find those double uh, Lugias on turn one and see what he can follow up and withstand the pressure that Agustin will be applying. Yeah, we do see the, the Ultra Ball once more uh, on both sides. Just a, a very consistent way to open up uh, the hands here. But yeah, John is going to try to get as much information as possible. Does see the one choice belt in the deck. And uh, I think that's probably the first card that you go after when you see that you're starting uh, the Raikou. And there is a potential, at least, to get the attack off. Uh, of course, looking for the Lugia as well. We do see the one and certainly would suggest finding another if possible. Yeah, having that third choice build, I think that's something that I've been a uh, big fan of with my Lugia testing. Since choice build can be so essential for Raikou, for Lugia, and for Radiant Charizard, having that third resource, I'm sure if you ask John or you asked anyone from their testing group, they would say that choice build, having that third choice build has felt pretty great. So we are going to see the Lugia here and the double Lugia, sorry, the attachment and the pass, but you really can't ask for much more as John, as actually he uses research. It's got even more. The Crobat was an option as well, but didn't value uh, adding a three extra cards when the research was likely to just be the follow-up play, Evolution Incense, and I believe another uh, discarding ball search is going to be fantastic here, finding a way to get these second Archeops into the discard pile. Can't draw it up much better than this for going second that will allow John to uh, potentially either commit to an attacker, an alternate attacker, um, instead of using Lugia, as we see the Evil Doll. However, if, once again, the Collapse Stadium was something that came into play, then that could be problematic if Agustin didn't get the KO. But we are actually instead going to see the Mana Fee. So John, with no information about his opponent's deck, just assumes that since he is playing Raikou, he needs to protect from a Raikou. But as he'll see as the game develops, there's nothing to worry about in that regard. I think that 
should be just about it. We do see a couple more items in the hands, but no real need to overextend in a situation like this. Let's see what Augustine has on the other side. He is holding um, the incense to be able to get that second Archeops into the discard pile. I believe there's only one so far. He is having that decision between guaranteeing the Lugia or just getting that Archeops in the discard pile. I feel like with the research in hand, with four instances and four Ultra Balls still available, you definitely want to commit to getting that second Archeops. It's just so useful, so good for the follow-ups, and you have the initiative, and double Archeops will certainly allow you to keep up the pressure. I guess the question was, if he has some sort of costing effect, he might have wanted to go after a Lugia, but I think that's only valid if there's only one Lugia in play, like was the case the previous game for Agustin. Right, yeah, it, it can be a very strong play, especially when you can absolutely uh, avoid the summoning star, but in this instance, it might not be nearly as strong. Uh, the Raikou still is a threat. We haven't seen the Dunsparce just yet, but we are seeing a quick ball now, so uh, certainly could be valued. I think this will really be telling of what to expect here. Either we're going to see the Lugia V-Star taking a knockout on this Raikou, or if the Dunsparce is played down on the bench, maybe that opens up an avenue for one of these gusting effects. Yeah, this Dunsparce is a good, um, potentially good failsafe here in case the Lugia V-Star is not found by Agustin right now. But, like I said, his chances of finding it are very, very high. Seven cards of the research, the deck has been thinned quite a bit, and we do see the incense into the Lugia. Agustin's biggest concern right now must be that he'll be taking one prize card, John will very likely respond with a KO on the Lugia for two prize cards, so even though he will have the initiative, it's on him to make sure that John doesn't win the game by just taking two prizes, two prizes, two prizes off of rule box Pokémon. Yeah, that can that can definitely get scary. Of course, the uh, the prize pips are inaccurate in this point. John hasn't taken prize cards yet, so we'll see if we can get that adjusted soon. Uh, both players uh, are at six prize cards, and we are going to see the first V star flip here as the summoning star is going to bring these two Archeops up onto the table. Yeah, with the two Archeops, Agustin must be ve feeling very very comfortable. Definitely things going your way, or his way rather, <laughs> in this game. Uh, he'll be able to power up, saving those powerful energies as well. Maybe with the V-Guard he can prevent John from taking prizes on the Lugia V-Star. That would also be huge, further putting him ahead. And that's what we're seeing. We're going to see the commitment of the V-Guard and the capture to ensure that John needs the maximum amount of cards to be able to take this knockout. Yeah, we've seen how important it is to make uh, the most use of those powerful energies when you can. So if you can go ahead and attack, take a knockout, and not have to use any of those energies, save those for later. We've seen situations where even uh, they could have been beneficial on an Archeops attacking at some point. And we do know that this game likely could be a situation where Augustine needs to find some of those single prize Pokemon to get into the mix. And then grabbing that Aurora energy of the prize cards will let Agustin have an easier time attacking with Evil Doll or an eventual Radiant Charizard if he needs to. We also have um, John promoting the Lugia V-Star, potentially getting the KO here. He's missing a choice build for powerful energies on a Lugia. Would be 10 short, right, doing 300 damage with its attack and reducing 30 from the V-Guard, that would be 270 damage total. So we'll have to see if John is able to find his only choice belt in the deck because the other two are prized. Yeah, that was, uh, of course, always thinking about the, the Raikou finding the damage, but sure enough, def definitely going to need that to work through the V-Guard energy. And that is a lot to ask for from your deck. Of course, there is uh, some thinning potential if you... Uh, get all of these powerful energies onto the Lugia, but it looks like John is considering an alternate route here. These energies uh, scream evil all to me. Yeah, definitely. The the lineup of the energies at the front of the deck definitely screams evil tall, and that's probably because John recognizes that it's not going to be easy to take this KO. It will be costly, though. He will be losing two energies on the retreat cost, or at least a double turbo and he will be committing five energies. But if he's able to free up a choice belt from the prize cards, 
There's no way Agustin cannot deal with this Evil Tall, because if he chose to take two price cards on a Lugia, then the Evil Tall would remain in play, powered up, and it would not be ideal, because it could just take the next KO. So forcing the player to deal with Evil Tall or have it remain in play is always an easy decision. Sometimes you just have to step back and look at the board and go, wow, the, the yeah, five energies just uh, just came out of nowhere attached to an Evital, and there's still an energy attachment for the turn that can happen. This is, it's unreal what the Pokemon TCG has gotten to, but sure enough, this is happening uh, all over the tournament. Double turbo energy is going to be used for the retreat, and the amazing destruction is online even going to see a little more here from john with the evolution incense for the second lugia v star it's a nice way to uh, protect the two prize cards with some additional hit points yeah this is a big commitment from john in terms of resources in terms of energies having to utilize that second double turbo to retreat but keeping that powerful energy that does mean lugia will have a chance to take a big knockout now that the v-guard energy is gone john no longer has much use for the choice build on his Lugia, but he will certainly be very happy to utilize those in case he needs one for Radiant Charizard. So things lining up very nicely here for John, despite going second. Yeah, this is uh, certainly looked like an advantageous spot. Uh, the prize card for Augustine wasn't terribly impactful, although it was uh, on a Raikou, but John is uh, just taking away one of the biggest threats that Augustine could potentially make. And now it's on Agustin to respond to this. I think the Pokemon you wouldn't want to use is the Arceus, because even though it is a very easy knockout on the Evil Tall, losing that resource of the Arceus very basically puts your Evil Tall out of commission, which you might need to use in order to deal with a Lugia. However, he is eyeing this Stoutland here. With the Stoutland and four powerful energies, he would be able to knock out Evil Tall with its attacks double dip fangs which grants him an extra prize card if he knocks out a basic pokemon i'm not ready for the double dip fangs i could i could see it coming uh would be uh absolutely ridiculous here but you, you made a good point you can't lose the archaeops right now it's it's such a valuable uh card to have yes john has played so many energies and he's been using them to retreat and trying to press uh any advantage that he can as he was going second but Augustine's going to need those additional energies to go through the deck and start to thin out and get all these resources played. If you only have one Archeops, there's no way that you'll eventually be charging up these Pokemon like the Evital or maybe the Radiant Charizard if it wants to go in before uh, too many prize cards are taken. Exactly. Committing four energies on a Stoutland to knock out an Evital and then committing four or five energies uh, to the next Evital to get the KO. It's just going to be a lot, so... I mean, this is still pretty hefty on the investment. Using your Evil Tall to knock out their Evil Tall, then the question is, well, how do you follow this up cost-effectively? Yeah, trading five energies for a single price card, that's going to be a lot of pressure on Agustin's resources. Yeah, this is this is a lot. Uh, certainly uh, has to be a good reason for this. Potentially a gusting effect still in hand. I don't know if we've seen the supporter for the turn just yet. Uh, there is the energy... The Aurora to retreat. We're going to see Evital up into the active position. Is this really the answer? No double dip. <laughs> or do dip we want some prize today. cards? <laughs> <laughs> well, no double dip thanks today for us. I feel like we've seen that card in Lugia decks all day, but we have never seen it actually attack once. So that begs the question how useful is it actually? Yeah, have we seen the. Lugia featuring the Stoutland up against the Lost Box, because I think that's only the, I guess that's the real game where you, you can make it very useful, I guess uh, also against like Reggie's and stuff occasionally too. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm guessing it must have been useful at some point, right? Perhaps not featuring uh, that matchup, but I don't know, like, do you really want to include a card that's so, for such a specific matchup with Giratina's popularity going down? I mean, Lost Box is also pretty popular, but it's not useful against Lugia, it's not useful against Mew. Um, is it better than Raikou, which can be helpful against Lugia as well? Yeah, we've seen so many uh, additional cards in that slot be 
very beneficial if you play in a, a second V-Guard energy. That could be something that we've seen some players finding uh, excellent success with, or even that second Luminion, as we were talking about earlier on. So just finding some additional consistency instead of be, uh, looking for that one matchup, those, those could be the difference in winning these rounds, but also they help you get to those rounds, I suppose. Yeah. Now, we, we are seeing John being the same conundrum as Agustin with do you try to go for the two prizes on the Lugia or do you deal with Evil Doll? And I think the answer is pretty clear. You have to deal with this Evil Doll. You cannot let that sit there for more than one turn. Any deck that can't deal with Evil Doll immediately after it has been powered up is certainly going to struggle. But the question is, who do you use? Do you commit an Archives now or do you go into a Lugia, which can be... Um, taken down by your opponents for powerful energy Lugia as well. Yeah, I think this situation is a little bit different than what Augustine was facing as Augustine hadn't accelerated any energies at the time that we had uh, seen uh, the Archeops on, on their side. So now John's in a situation where uh, there, there are only so many energies left to accelerate. You might as well start to make good use of them, and if you could get them onto the Archeops, uh, you should have enough energies to close out with a card like Radiant Charizard, uh, or make use of something like this Luminion, as we're seeing. A, a very strong alternate route to take a knockout. Yeah, once again, praising this beautiful Luminion with its Aqua Return attack. It can do the job, and it doesn't waste a single energy. Perhaps the one that was used to retreat into it. But outside of that, that Luminion, a very cost-effective attacker. It's great against all of the single prize attackers that have 110 HP, Evil Tall, Raikou, and Charizard, which has more, but it is weak to water. So Luminion, a fantastic answer. And then you get to potentially use it once again to get a boss, to get a Serena, to target down those last few prizes, or simply a Research or Marnie to get you out of a dead draw. Yep, uh, you do uh, lose the one card from the retreating, but of course you get to preserve many energies, and John still considering, is it, can I can I lose an Archeops at this point? I certainly don't want to promote something like that mana he had walk right into, perhaps uh, that Stoutland that was spoken of earlier, and uh, Archeops in the high hit points going to be the choice. John not choosing to give up on that Manaphy. He has not seen the Raikou. He does not know his opponent doesn't play Raikou, so he actually values the bench protection that Manaphy offers more so than the energy attachments that Archeops offers. However, uh, given John's current setup, if he lost the Manaphy, there's no easy target for Agustin to take down, even if he were to play a Raikou. So, I don't know, I feel like that's a little uh, questionable. Of course, 120 bench damage is impactful, but how impactful is it really on the Lugia when Agustin still has access to all four powerful energy at this point? Yeah, that, that's a, a great point. I don't, I don't know if the Manaphy is really doing much of anything other than being a liability at this point, potentially uh, could be targeted down uh, if the Stoutland was a desperation play or something of that nature. And, uh, plenty of Pokemon on the bench with a lot of hit points, and John really hasn't been in a situation where he's had to leave any liabilities on the bench. So we saw the Evital, even though it has uh, a lower hit points, it's, it was already used uh, in the the attacking phases early on in the game. Yeah, now with the Stoutland gone and the uh, educated guess that you could take here that no Lugia deck is playing any sort of Pokemon recovery, then you know it's not something you have to worry about. And that Manaphy, because it's blocking Raikou from attacking the bench, it's impossible for it to take two prizes. So I think you'd be in a very comfortable spot here, giving up on the Manaphy and saving that um, Archeops. But John does not know that there's no Raikou, so... Well, it's been a little bit of time here as Augustine is uh, contemplating how to go about this turn certainly is awkward being down one prize card in this exchange as you were the player who went first. We are going to see the attachment, at least one, going to the Arceus by way of the Primal Turbo. Yes, Agustin is looking through his deck. He doesn't have a lot of resources left. He cannot afford to attack with the double turbo here because that would not be enough. We've seen players before uh, underestimate the HP that Archeops actually has. It looks like a single price Pokemon, which usually have less HP, because Archeops is not evolving from 
the fossil I would normally would, but it still features a good amount of HP and it does require too powerful from an opposing Archeops to even be able to KO it. Yeah, we are going to see the double powerful energy and that capture coming down. Radiant Charizard added to the bench for Augustine. And that will be enough damage for a knockout, but we do know that the powerful energies are a valuable resource. We'll see if those are available in the end of uh, this game, as it is pretty difficult to close out, uh, especially as uh, likely an Archeops will fall here. And you can see the value of that very early game, not even early game, pre-game decision that John uh, went for choosing to start the Raikou instead of the Lugia. He's now being rewarded. He somehow went second. Agustine got an ideal setup. And John retained the initiative in this price trade-off because Agustine was only able to take one price card on that Raikou. So John being rewarded by that decision. And you can see like how important it is to think about everything, right? Just because you're playing a Lugia deck, that doesn't mean you want to have Lugia out immediately, especially if you're going second. It becomes a liability. Even if you have the possibility to guarantee another Lugia on the bench, it's much better to have a single one in the active spot. Yeah, you said thinking of everything, and look at this. John going to uh, line up to go down to just one prize remaining and using the gift energy uh, from the Archeops there to assist in uh, maybe avoiding some of that awkwardness with uh, a card like Marnie or uh, even Roxanne if that would be featured. You could just avoid uh, worrying about losing that hand and the Radiant Charizard is also getting ready on the bench. Yeah, with that gift energy, John protects himself from any potential Marnie party trick. Roxanne um, really taking away any options. He also has a Radiant Charizard down. So he has two Pokemon that can potentially attack. There's nothing that survives a Radiant Charizard hit. And there we see Agustin recognizing John's unsurmountable advantage. And we see the match. Yeah, that was quite a way to close out there. John overcoming the odds twice, uh, winning both times, going second in the match. And it looks like both players have plenty to say to each other about those games. Uh, very exciting to see. Uh, some, ex uh, some really strong play uh, with the Lugia build, and uh, John was really just finding all of the perfect lines there. We saw uh, sneaking in that Luminion at the perfect time, getting that Lugia uh, set up at a, a basically checkmate position at the end of game two. Yeah, and John didn't have any need for those choice builds at the end, so even though they play three, they recognize how important they are. You pricing two didn't really matter because John was able to use the right resources at the right time, and I think the biggest thing in that match was John realizing that he could afford to commit those five energies on the Evil Doll. It was a very favorable trade, and it forces your opponent to immediately deal with that. So Agustin could not get ahead in the price trade-off, and that allowed John to change the initiative to be on him. Yeah, I, I love the respect that we see from Augustine at the end of that game. Very uh, passionate in uh, the the high five, the, the 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 handshake that goes at the end of the game to John, uh, doing that multiple times, of course, uh, giving that to the judge as well. And then, I mean, this is a big game. This is a game that potentially means that Augustine isn't going to make top eight anymore. And there was everything on the line there. Uh, absolute gentleman at the end of the game to uh, uh, here on the big stage. Yeah, I know a lot of. Uh, players, especially from Latin America, like their one chance of being on stream is at the Latin America International Championship, right? Or perhaps at Worlds, but we can only stream one match. As much as we would love to stream plenty of people every single round, we can only feature one match. So it's very nice to see uh, that sportsmanship towards the end of the game. Yeah, very nice. Uh, excited for John. This is a very great opportunity, a win and in situation as uh, we currently see it right now. Maybe we'll get some information later and uh, see if the ID is possible. But let's expect that a, a victory is necessary in round 15 for John. And this has been a, a long time coming for him. He's been uh, working diligently to, to make this happen, had an opportunity uh, at NAIC at these last few regionals, and it just hasn't really happened yet. And I'm excited to see if uh, this is his tournament. Yeah, absolutely, John. Like we've talked about, has a very... Uh prestigious history within the game, very good senior, has top cutted a bunch of regionals, has top cutted NAIC, he's now here at LAC with a very good chance at top cutting, and this might finally be his run. 
Yeah, I, uh, I remember my first introduction to John Ng on the scene. Uh, I had just moved to Maryland for college, and I was going to check out the local league, and here comes this nine-year-old, ten-year-old goofball who has no idea. What to do. He's like, oh, my God, you're Kyle. And I'm like, uh, hey, dude. And uh, sure enough, years later, it's, oh, my gosh, you're John. <laughs> <laughs> how the tables turn, don't they? <laughs> uh, it's very fun, very exciting to see. He's also in a, in a very uh, great group in North America, so many great names. Uh, some of them are still competing, but I don't believe that they have an opportunity to make top eight. Maybe Reagan Retzloff. I uh, haven't seen how the rest of his tournament has gone, but was at least sitting at 28 or 29 points at uh, one of these uh, opportunities here. Yeah, it seems like that group, they're always playing, or almost always playing the same deck, and usually we see one or two of them in top cut. So definitely there's a lot to gain from uh, exchanging ideas with other people, going back and forth, and um, getting input from uh, what they've, what results they've gathered, what you've understood so far from the metagame, especially from a brand new set, right? When a brand new set hits, that's when, despite the cards being available a little earlier in Japan, and therefore um, we can take a look at lists or whatever from over there. Uh, that's not, their metagame is not always 100% representative of what we get in the other side of the world. So there's a lot of ground to cover with uh, new sets and being in a group with a lot of talented players definitely helps. Yeah, the, the credit has uh, been given to Justin Bakari before as he is really the one who puts in a lot of the work, but obviously there has to be another player on the side of that table. And, uh, many times it's been Isaiah putting in the work, but I'm sure that everyone's trying to, to put in their fair share at this point and uh, help out the group find the perfect 60. And you also got to play it a little bit to, to make sure that you're the right pilot for the deck. I mean, on, on my way here uh, to Brazil, I met up with Sam Chen in Mexico. His layover was in Mexico, and we were playing games um, at, the, at the lounge. So, nice. yeah, you know, the, the testing never stops. That's perfect. Well, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at John Ng and hear about his performance from his own mouth. Go ahead and take it away uh, at the stage. Thanks, Kyle and Pablo. Yes, I'm here with the winner from the last round, John Ng. Cheering for you, man. Um, congratulations, first off. 10, 1, and 3. Great place to be. 33 match points. Still very much fighting for a spot. How do you feel about where you're at right now going into this last round? So I have no clue the math for top eight. Um, I might be able to intentionally draw and that might bubble me in, but I have a feeling I'm gonna have to play out next round and get the win. So being at 33 is like really awkward because you're like just under the threshold to getting in. But um, you know, I'll do some math and see where that puts me. Check out on that resistance, maybe see where you're at there. But uh, yeah, still regardless, however it ends up in the last round, already a great run. Another successful tournament from you without a doubt. Now you played the Lugia Mirror in this last round, which is something I'm sure you've played many times throughout the course of this weekend. Why don't you tell us about some of your experiences with that mirror match and how that aided you in this last game you just played? Yeah, that was my 11th Lugia Mirror of the weekend. Um, and yeah, no, I mean, the matchup is, like we said yesterday, uh, heavily favored person who goes first, but there's a little bit that goes into it, you know. Person who goes first can't play a supporter, so they have less opportunities to set up. Uh, it, usually if the person who goes first gets double arc gaps in their discard, it's like, all right, congrats, you win. But um, there's a lot of, like, you know, if your opponent benches two, multiple two prize Pokemon, you can get ahead if you're going second. Uh, there's a lot of comebacks with, like, one prize Pokemon that you can use, so there's definitely layers to the matchup that still need to be explored. And you won a 2-0 set there where you went second in both of those games, right? So definitely impressive. Obviously, your opponent missing the Lugia in game one is going to be really tough to come back from regardless. But you were able to implement some of those strategies. Now, our casters were having a little bit of question about a play. And you were also talking to me backstage about it already. You said to me, why did I promote the Archeops? So talk us through the end game there. After you use Luminion, you have a choice between sending up one of two Lugia V-Star, one of your two Archeops, or the Mana V. What was going through your mind? So, I don't know, Chip. Um, I was like, oh, Archeops is harder to kill. I'll still be able to, you know, attack with Lugia next turn if I find an attachment. Like, the Mana V was easy. I was worried about potential Stoutland plays, and then also, um, I was thinking I wanted him to use, I thought he had already used a powerful energy, to be honest with you. So I was like, oh, if I promote the Archeops, he has to commit two more powerfuls with an Archeops to kill it, or knock it out. And, um, then he'd have one powerful to work with. His Lugia can never one-shot my Lugia back, and I'd still be ahead from there. But it was my mistake. I was so far ahead that I should have just like put up the Manaphy and then with double Archaeops in play and the 
double gust effect in my hand. I was just like, if he doesn't Marnie me, then I should just be chilling. But thankfully, I top decked the capture energy. I have, a, the, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it works out in the end. Uh, I think, I guess you were out of double turbos then uh, to be able to get the extra energy needed off of just one single Archeops. So ends up working out. You get the win here, like we mentioned, a 10, one, and three record. We'll definitely be watching how this last round goes for you, rooting for you, hope you can you know, succeed here in this final round. Anyone you want to say thank you to who helped you prepare for this tournament? Any shout outs you want to give? Yeah, I'd like to shout out the entire group. Uh, I see if I can remember everyone. Isaiah, Justin, uh, Reagan, Xander, Sam, Rahul. All of them saved my tournament because I was, before the tournament, not going to play this deck. Um, I was going to play some Lost Box deck with like Rayquaza and stuff like that because it was going pretty well for me in testing. But they were like, John, don't be the only one to not play it. Play Lugia. I switched and now, um, I haven't checked in on Reagan and Isaiah, but they're both in contention for top eight with some wins, so it would be so sick if all three of us made it. We'll see what happens indeed. Last round coming up very shortly. For now, we'll throw it back to the casters. Thank you, Chip. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great to always hear from John. And uh, to, to give him a little bit more information, we did get to check in and see at uh, table eight, Reagan Retzloff did lose. Uh, so at 29 points, 